Hey YouTube, welcome back for episode 9 of my quarantine diet series. My name is Stephanie, this is Holly, and welcome back. Uh, I ended up skipping last week, so week 8's episode, because I felt like week 8 and week 9 really kind of just mushed into each other. Uh, I returned to work about 3 weeks ago, and then I had 2 exams this past weekend, and life was just, life has been crazy. <laughs> So many things have changed over the past month. All like really, really good stuff. Um, things that I just guess I never really expected to happen. And um, it is pouring outside. I'm wondering if you guys are going to be able to hear it. <laughs> um, all really, really good stuff. And a lot of good changes and a lot of things to look forward to. And uh, just, you know, I guess... It just kind of gives into that like age old saying that like things happen when you least expect it and that's definitely what June has been for me and I'm really feeling sentimental about it because I've put a lot of work into me over the past several years and I would say within the past like three months I would definitely during the COVID lockdowns you know, I began to just kind of wonder, like, when the next, like, transitional shift was going to happen. You know, like, I'm ready for it. You know, and I always talk about how if there's things in the world that you want or goals that you want to achieve or whatever it is, just put that positive energy out there and, like, ask for it. You know, and you could literally just say, like, this is what I want. Like, you literally just... Think about it, embody it every day, keep working on yourself, keep investing in yourself. And I truly believe that, and I've said this even before all of this, like when you really invest in yourself and you really love yourself and put the time into yourself, it, it's like everything aligns in life. And even if certain things aren't perfect, because they're never going to be perfect, things are never going to be 100% like where they want, where we want them to be, like that will still be okay because your security is, is in here. So just some philosophical thoughts for you guys at the beginning of this episode. So over the past two weeks, definitely have seen a lot of change uh at, for i will be honest with you the weight the scale weight so i always talk about this like how scale weight really isn't always super indicative of the entire process or in, you know your progress from week to week we can use it as a data point it is valuable information to know uh and to observe however pictures really in my opinion tell a greater story um so if you look at the past two progress photos of me that I posted on my Instagram feed or my Facebook page, you'll notice that the scale hadn't really changed too much, but the visual change between each week is very prominent. And it's really exciting uh, because I needed that. Like, I needed that motivation. It's another moment where maybe motivation is necessary amidst your drive and your determination. You need that motivation, you need those touch points, you need those landmarks to kind of earmark and just remind you like, I can do this, I am doing this, it is possible, the hard work that I am putting in to all of this is paying off, I show up every day and I get it, give it everything that I've got. and. It's good to know that it's happening. Let's keep pushing forward. So um, this past week, however, was a big change on the scale, and I was almost really surprised. So check it out. Last week, I ended up traveling back to Connecticut, and I decided that when I went, I did not bring my food scale, and I did not bring my actual like scale, like my weighing scale for myself. And I did this with the intention of eating intuitively, honoring my current goals, and eating in regards to that, while still allowing myself to have 
flexibility while I was with my boyfriend and again of course I went to the winery with my mother because you know would it be a trip back to Connecticut if I didn't do that and uh, just you know honoring my ability to be flexible and to hold myself accountable while still adhering to my goals and when I left on Sunday morning I weighed 141.2 pounds or whatever and I was a little disappointed I was like wow really like I thought maybe I would have made more progress and then so I didn't start weighing myself this week for week nine until when I returned Wednesday and even after having a little snack and some water on the ride up Wednesday morning I stepped on the scale when I got home and I was 138.8 and I like my jaw dropped I mean that's like almost a three pound difference from just a few days before uh, and I don't believe that it has anything to do with the fact that maybe I had eaten less on Monday and Tuesday while I had been traveling. I don't believe that to be so. Um, I think it was, honestly, I, I think that it has a lot to do with the fact that I have now reintroduced all of this activity at work that I haven't been doing in the past three and a half months. And let me tell you, it is a lot. I have not tracked my steps. I won't lie, I brought the little tracker with me and I put it in my bag and I keep forgetting to put it on because I don't want to track my steps for the entire day. I want to just track it from the moment that I walk into work to when I leave and I keep forgetting. But one of my other coworkers is tracking their steps and, and in the middle of the night they were like, I'm at 15,000. And I was like, oh my God, that's aggressive. So, and I really wouldn't put it, like it is, it's a lot of moving around. Uh, I'm not allowed to have anybody sit at my bar and most people want to sit outside so I'm serving people outside so I have to like run across the restaurant to get to people and then I have to like run back and like make drinks make my own drinks make everybody else's drinks because I'm the only bartender and it's just it's a lot a lot a lot I feel like I'm running a marathon it's definitely attributing this strong push to that and really, so I think it was what last episode, so week seven's episode, so I skipped eight. I had mentioned how I had put my clothes on, like I started trying my clothes. These are my clothes. These are already loose on me. Like I am fitting in my clothes, which is so exciting. Like I'm finally putting a bikini on and I feel confident in my body again. Like essentially the goal that I achieved to, that I set out originally to achieve nine weeks ago, I... Have, I've done it. Um, I'm still going to keep going. I'm not 100% contented yet. I'd like to keep pushing. I'm on a really good roll right now and I'm not quite there yet. Um, but just really things have just really come together for me in the past couple of weeks with this whole process and it's really exciting to see. Um, some things that I kind of observed however, I started writing notes down about what I want to talk about so I don't ramble. Um, I have noticed that my energy is waning when I'm training. I didn't really, I trained one time last week uh, because of my travel. I trained when I came home and definitely was feeling a little bit weaker than normal. I wasn't sure if it was because it's been several days since I trained, but definitely felt like I didn't have as much in the gas tank. And then I felt that again this morning when I ran, um, definitely feeling a little depleted. Uh, and even looking at my progress photos that I posted yesterday from um, comparing week eight to week nine, I look flat. So my muscle bellies don't look full. And you'll kind of notice that in week eight, you can kind of see more muscle definition than you can in week nine. And I would definitely attribute that to the fact that I'm flat, meaning because I've been dieting, I'm not I'm not replenishing my glycogen stores every single day because I'm not eating enough carbohydrates to do that. Uh, I'm eating still at 160 grams. In fact, some days I do fall below. I did notice that on my days that I'm working, I leave a little with the intentions of maybe having a glass of wine at the end of the night, at the end of my shift, or coming home and having a salad. And sometimes I don't necessarily take advantage of those calories so shame on me I'm actually a little bit lower than I have myself set at for that particular reason so yesterday I made sure that I ate at maintenance and did a little bit of a refeed I might do another one this week again um, I'm not on any sort of a time limit here and 
even though I have higher maintenance days more frequently than I'm used to doing than normal, I'm still seeing progress. I mean, I would argue that my macros, even now that I've returned to work, are probably a bit low for me. I mean, I'm not going to change that at the moment. I'm going to stick to the plan and keep doing what I'm doing. But sprinkling in those higher calorie days at maintenance do really help if I strategically take them at the right time. So definitely comfortable with doing that. I'm probably, like, looking forward, I am anticipating, so it's the end of June, by no later than August, I will be reverse dieting. If things keep going in the direction that they're going, I would expect that I will be where I want to be in probably two weeks, which is landing me right at the beginning to middle of July. So at some point during July, beginning of August, I will start the reverse diet process. And um, at that point, I do have some exciting news to share, but I am not ready to reveal that yet, but stay tuned. I'm not sure when I'm going to say it, but I'm going to try to keep it a secret as much as, as long as I can. But looking back forward, looking forward to August, you guys will know by then. Um, oh, something that I do want to talk about is I had mentioned last week that I'm doing this Maxim cover contest. And so I'm officially in top five which is super exciting. I'm in third place. I've been pretty much consistently hold, holding third place for the past week and a half. This week is the, it is like the make or break. If I am not in first or second by this Thursday, I will be disqualified from the contest, which would be really sad. But at the same time, I'm actually really excited because this has been a really awesome process. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of you guys have reached out and expressed your support and have helped me by voting for me every single day and sharing it. People have been sharing my Facebook and my, my Instagram posts about it. And it's really awesome that I have everybody's support and I have, wouldn't be able to have made it this far to the top five if it wasn't for you guys. So thank you guys for everyone who has helped me. Uh, if you, we're unaware that I am doing this contest, but I'm going to tell you guys about it because I want to kind of fill you guys in a little bit more about why it is that I'm doing what I'm doing because I think that it's really important for you guys to understand why. So the Maxim Cover Contest is a contest. It, it popped up on my phone back at the end of May and said, you know, you could win a Maxim Cover and two-page spread in Maxim Magazine this year as well as $25,000. You know, it's really easy to apply, send three photos and a quick bio of yourself to apply. And so I was like, yeah, why not? You know, I have Freddie's professional photos that I love from our boudoir shoot last year. And so I was like, well, why not? Those would be perfect to submit. Let's see what happens. So I did it. And I heard within 24 hours that I was accepted into the contest and that voting would start promptly the week after. And it was really cool because for the first few weeks I was in first place. I like really couldn't, I was shocked actually. Um, and then things changed so that <laughs> they do these warrior votes. So the, the magazine has partnered with Homes for Wounded Warriors, which is a really cool uh, benefit. It helps remodel homes for disabled veterans, so it makes them um, accessible to disabled veterans, which is 100% a cause that I can get behind and I feel very strongly about. Uh, so I'm excited that this opportunity has also allowed me to open up that door for people to donate and to um, donate money for that cause in for you know in my in support of me in the contest, which is exciting. Um, so there's that, and then. Obviously, just finding new ways to put myself out there, but most importantly, I'm doing this because I look at that money as an initial investment into my future practice. I'm going to be graduating from the University of Bridgeport with my master's degree in clinical nutrition at this time next year. Um, I will be completing my final semester, and it's been a long ride. It's been a long emotional ride. Uh, for a lot of different reasons and um, this is something that I guess five years ago it was something that I wanted to do but hadn't 
I just didn't act on it. I, I kept kind of telling myself, like, it's not the right time, it's not the right time, it's not the right time. And truly it wasn't, obviously, until it finally happened and it was the right time. But this, getting this degree was such a dream of mine. And then further down the road, I dreamed of having my own practice. And this is all inspired by the clinician who helped me when I was very sick with SIBO back in 2014 and 2015. Um, <coughs> excuse me. She has Corona. I'm just kidding. Um, she has her own practice in Monroe, Connecticut, and she helps people. She provides medical nutrition therapy for people, and I want to help her do that. You know, I love... Um, I, I love being able to help people accomplish positive body composition change and relationships with themselves and just un, and food, having a better relationship with food and respecting food. And I love doing that. And it's a tremendous part of what I will always do in regards to nutrition. But I want to be able to help people who are sick. And I want to be able to partner with other healthcare providers in supplementing with nutritional intervention in addition to whatever other health care that individual needs. So for example, somebody with type 2 diabetes who is overweight or, who, or, or obese and has really no choice but to implement exercise and diet into their treatment, I want to be able to be that person that is that extra piece. I truly believe that health care is missing nutrition and lifestyle intervention and I truly believe that we can work alongside medical doctors and, and other healthcare providers in providing comprehensive treatment for patients that are sick that can benefit from nutritional intervention. This degree has really opened up my eyes to just how much power nutrition has in our everyday lives and it makes me think back to me personally for how long I neglected that myself and didn't take advantage and, and just I just didn't know and I want it to I want to help make nutrition and good health accessible to more people and that's why I'm doing this and I'm looking at this cover contest as an opportunity to be able to have an initial investment in that business when I'm ready to open it. I want to have my own private practice or I want to partner with someone, with, a, with, an, with another professional. Um, I have this dream that I will have a practice with, an, with offices, of course, but I also want like a small gym where I can partner with physical therapists or, you know, those who are who specialize in corrective exercise and mobility and, and just being able to help people get moving again uh, and, and feeling confident in that. And um, that's really what I see in my future. And I don't know uh, where or when or whatever that is, but I can promise you that if I win the Maxim Magazine cover contest, that that $25,000 will be put away and will be used for my business when I am ready to pull that trigger. And that's why this is so important to me. And I wanted to make sure that you guys knew why I was doing this. Uh, because it is much more to me than just getting, you know, a cover on a magazine. I mean, that's freaking awesome. And I am so stoked to be able to have that opportunity. And it will be awesome if I win it and have that opportunity to do that, you know. I mean, that's like the photo shoot of a lifetime. And could potentially open other doors for me in that realm as well. But uh, the money is where I am most concerned about because I want to be able to use it to help me help other people in the future. And so I wanted to make sure that you guys knew that. And um, I'll be honest with you, that's really all I have for you guys today. Uh, it was overall a really good week. My clothes are starting to fit good again. I'm wearing my old shorts. I couldn't even get these over my hips a few weeks ago, and now the waist is, is loose. I'm feeling better. I'm feeling more like myself. I'm feeling beautiful again. I don't think I felt beautiful for a long time. Um, and 
I've just really found, I've rediscovered my passion for this life and what I do. And it's hard when I feel not aligned with nutrition and my own wellness and my own health that it's also really challenging for me to exude that positivity to those that I work with. And like I mentioned, this past month has been a dramatic change for me and there's a lot of really awesome things that have happened and are, hap are happening and that I anticipate happening in the future just based on how much work that I've put in to myself and my life over the past couple of years, especially during this pandemic. You know, and I know that this has, I'm not here to make light of the lockdown and what the pain that people have gone through. This has affected every one of us on a different level and it still continues to do that very much so. As much as I feel us as a population really trying to push forward and push past this, like if we just keep pushing, you know, maybe we can leave it behind us, but it doesn't seem to be doing that. Um, you know, it still has continued to wreak havoc on all of our lives. Um, but I think that there is a silver lining and I promise you that it's never too late to discover what that is. And I encourage you to do that. And your answer should always be yes to a lot of different questions. If you have the opportunity to do something spontaneously, weigh out your pros and your cons, but I can promise you that if it's a new opportunity and it has even just a glimmer of a promise that it could work out and it could mean something better for you in the long run, just go for it. What do you have to lose? I'm gonna leave you guys with that. Um, thank you so, so much for joining me this week. Uh, I'm going to be changing up the schedule a little bit so this, my videos will not be posted every Tuesday so that it seems to make a little bit more sense with each week. So I will always post it directly after my progress photo that I post every Sunday or Monday uh, on Instagram and Facebook. So every Tuesday now you can catch this episode of my quarantine diet series moving forward until I end this diet and then we will start the reverse diet so maybe I'll call it quarantine post COVID reverse diet or something I don't know we'll figure it out but thank you guys for all of your support and thank you for watching and tuning in subscribe like this video subscribe to my channel comment below um, we'd love to hear what your thoughts are if you guys like me to chat about anything specifically about this process or anything else really would love to hear from you guys thank you so much I will catch you guys next week for week 10. I hope that you all have an amazing 4th of July this weekend. Take care guys.